dive into this scenario here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lowball the results. I'm going to uh, make it seem like we're going, it's going to take a little longer, but in actuality, this person's going to do a lot better just because of me lowballing them. And this is what I like to do with a lot of different scenarios that I run. Uh, just so we can have room for those incidentals, unexpected expenses, emergencies, vacations, trips, holidays, all that stuff. So when I'm doing velocity banking, when you guys are doing velocity banking, once we get a rhythm flowing, go ahead and lowball yourself in terms of your, like when you make that next chunk, you want to project it out. You want to set that goal. Okay, in six months or in nine months, I want to be able to chunk at this point and do it based off by lowballing yourself on your cash flow maybe or overestimating on expenses. You can do one of each or both. And then if you see by doing that, oh, in six months or in nine months, I'll be able to chunk, chances are you'll be probably chunking in month four or five, okay? And this just creates momentum. It definitely creates a lot of discipline and keeps you motivated. So let's take a look. We have Income of four thousand five sixty three sixty two. My monthly expenses are three thousand eighty four dollars and eighty six cents. My total debt is sixty thousand five hundred fifty six dollars and ninety four cents. Cash flow one thousand four seventy eight seventy six. I have a personal line of credit unsecured for fifteen thousand at ten point seven five percent. And here are my debts. Okay, I've got these two credit cards. I have two 401k loans. And then I also have a student loan over $25,000. Okay. Person has no mortgage. All right, so her goal is to not only just pay off her debt, but she simultaneously wants to build a business. She wants to teach velocity banking. She wants to help people. She wants to do the infinite banking concept and help people do that. She wants to, you know, establish her own, you know, workshops and really uh, do a lot of the things that I'm doing right now. She wants to build that for herself. So we're going to keep those goals in mind and also be mindful of any wins that she has while paying off debt. That, uh, that, that everything just aligns with what she wants to do. So when we're looking at our finances and we want to, let's say, become debt free, we want to make sure we're giving our money purpose for after. Okay, after you're debt free, now what? Or as you're approaching debt free, what do you want to do with this money? Because if you don't know what to do with the money, chances are you'll go right back into debt, bad debt. From a general standpoint, what I like to do with everyone is velocity banking, transition into infinite banking, eventually do something in real estate, or build a business, or 10x your income. And that can happen all at the same exact time, especially doing the concept. And then we also want to figure out, okay, what is your actual purpose in life, something that is perpetual, that'll create so much wealth, uh, a lot of, bring you a lot of happiness and joy in the process. All right, so we want to be mindful of that. So I know her goals. I know what she wants to do. Uh, so the very first move, looking at the debts. Okay, this is a cash flow question. All right, which debt should I tackle first? Not even paying attention to the interest rates. I know right off the bat that I want to tackle this. Okay, there's 355 right here. I got 15,000 as a credit limit. It's a little bit above my 66% uh, utilization, but that's okay because I do have high cash flow and it also is a high cash flow gain. Another reason why I'm okay with doing this move is um, she has a bonus coming soon for 2000. I think that'll be next year. She also is gonna have some money on her tax returns. So that's going to funnel into on the on the back end in terms of me shifting this debt over to the line of credit 
to get the cash flow gain and to also work on my leverage capability on these two loans right here. With These are 401k loans, all right? And if I'm not mistaken, I believe she's at a point where she just doesn't exactly believe in her 401k anymore that that's going to bring her the, uh, the infinite amount of wealth that she wants. So I made a suggestion saying, hey, instead of, um, you know, killing our 401k uh, accounts or ending them, what I usually recommend for most people is say, hey, maybe we just stop funding it or we redirect where the actual money is going, especially if we're contributing to it. Because her goal is she wants to help people, she wants to maximize that, that's going to require some money. Instead of me throwing money at a hope and a prayer that I'm gonna earn this rate of return throughout the years, have my money work for me, I could just focus on 10Xing. 10X first, then invest later. Right, and, and technically you are making an investment which would be in yourself. And when you go from making 4,000 a month to 40,000 a month, there's a whole new, uh, you, you put yourself in a whole new tax bracket, number one, and you'll have different problems in terms of, okay, where the heck do I put this money now? And so that's when you can worry about investing. So I'd rather not put little dollars to make little returns. I'd rather create all this redirecting of money back to me, back to my control so that I can execute it the way I want to, all right? So we got these two 401k loans. I'm gonna wipe out this. Been working with her since before October. So she already made this move in terms of making a chunk, all right? And what happens is her income uh, take home is gonna go up. Okay, not her expenses are going to go down. Her income is going to go up because this was coming out of her paycheck. Okay, the 35503. Not too sure how it works. Maybe someone can comment um, that, uh, you know, when you pay off a 401k loan, do you get the same amount of money back into your paycheck? I don't believe so. I think it might be a little bit less because of taxes, right? Uh, because now you're technically you're taking home more money. So I wonder how that works. Maybe you guys can answer that for me. But that would be pretty, pretty interesting to understand there, if that is, if there's any issue there. But what I went ahead and did was just lowball and say from the 35503, her cash flow goes up. I mean her income will take home would be $4,800. So I'm now in debt on my line of credit. And um, this person also uh, makes money monthly. So she gets paid one time a month. So 15,000, took 13K out, paid off the 401k loan. Now all my income goes in, 4,800, expenses come out. Here's what my balance should look like at the end of October from when I was talking to her. Right now we're in November, 2019, okay? So balance 11,287.30. Mind you, I'm not even factoring in the interest because I already lowballed it, right? So I'm already factoring in that. I don't have to worry. This is an overestimation of what her balance will be. It's actually going to be lower. So do it again. Come November, income goes in, expenses come out, balance 9572.16. This is all I'm going to do for the next couple of months. One, two, three, four, five. Five months maybe six at max. So stepping into March 2020, after I consistently put money in, take money out, put money in, take money out. And this is gonna be really easy for her because it's only one time a month that she's putting money in. And then throughout every three to five days, she'll just be taking out a withdrawal from her line of credit <clears throat> to her checking account. Now, I understand that there are some personal lines of credits out there that you don't even need to have a checking account. I've been learning about this, that your line of credit can literally function just like your checking account. They give you a debit card and you can use it to swipe and there's no issues. But for those that do not have that, you'll need to have your checking account and your line of credit. Now, there's 
One more piece of advice that I received from uh, a client that mentioned that they do, um, that they add a overdraft protection from the line of credit to the checking account. And they were telling me that you can set this up with the bank if they allow it. I'm not sure if this is everyone, but let's just say this works where you set up your line of credit as overdraft protection on your checking account. And what he was telling me was that you can basically keep swiping your debit card from the checking account. And if you overdraft, it'll just pull from the line of credit, put a bit into your checking account to cover that uh, uh, expense. I don't know if I want to do that. Sounds a little bit funny to me. Uh, I, I kind of just like the idea of just taking money from my line of credit of three to five days of expenses, leaving it in the checking account for those couple days to live off of. As I'm running low on funds, I pull more money out of the line of credit. I receive my paycheck. Money goes back in. What he was saying is, Denzel, you don't even need to do all that pulling out stuff. You can just let your checking account just go negative every time because you have the overdraft protection. All your income is sitting in the line of credit anyways, that it could do it for you. This way you don't have to take out money for three to five days or a week or whatever it is. So you guys might want to look into that. It sounds a little funny to me. I don't, I don't know. I've never tried it myself, but it's an idea that someone, you know, in my community said they were a, uh, you know, exploring. So coming back to the board here, um, I'm in, let's say I'm in March of 2020, I'm estimating that her personal line of credit will be at $2,711.60. Mind you, she could have already gotten the bonus um, and then tax returns if she files early, she could have already gotten at that point. But the very next chunk I'm going to make, even if I'm not at a zero balance, by March 2020, right? So that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, so six months. Even if I'm not at a zero balance, I still have a chunk capability. I still have some nice, nice space here. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out these two credit cards and get a quick cash flow gain. The reason why I'm going back to these little ones is because I don't have enough space to wipe out the 401k. And it wouldn't make sense for me to start tackling the student loans because that's such a small such a small cash flow gain from you know working on that so we're going to wipe out these two get an 86 dollar cash flow gain for only a 5k chunk and my balance is going to go back up so at the beginning of march right let's say uh let's say february yeah, beginning of March, let's say I made that chunk. So at the end of February, my balance is at this $4,426.74. And, you know, we get paid monthly, basically at the end of, the, at the end of every month, she gets uh, paid. So the way it works for her is her paycheck that comes at the end of every month is basically the money that she uses for the, the following month. Okay, so four thousand four twenty six seventy four minus my income, the forty eight hundred, and then let's say I make that chunk. Okay, so I'm going to add five thousand sixty eight ninety one. Okay, and then I'm just going to add three thousand. Uh, I'm going to call it 3000 bucks. Okay, it's an 86 cash flow gain, so I'm just going to round it and say 3000 So that's going to put me at a balance owed on the line of credit for about 7695 So that'll be somewhere around March. Going into April, May, June... We do the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna uh, 
keep doing velocity banking. I'll take a look at my notes here to see what I projected for her. I was assuming that come July of 2020 that I would go ahead and chunk at this, the, the second 401k loan, and wipe that out. So while I'm doing velocity banking over here, I'm still making my monthly payment every month on all the debts. Okay, so 320.91 times six months, whatever that is, it should you know bring the balance down pretty good. Uh, so let's see, <clears throat> 7,695.65 minus income. Okay, and I'm gonna throw in that bonus now, right? Because I know I'm gonna get that 2,000. Okay, 7,000, how do I want it? Yeah, I'll just minus 2,000, and then minus 4,800, and then add expenses of 3,000. That puts me out of balance, 3,095. This is granted, nothing happens, nothing bad happens between October 2019 and April, May, June of 2020. Even if something did go down, it's okay because we always have space at least five to 6,000 of space in the line of credit itself, plus I lowballed her, okay? Another thing that's going to help her is that, uh, you know, starting in 2020, I'm actually gonna be creating some affiliate referral programs where my clients will actually be able to make some income just by sending people to my channel and then them signing up for, you know, my masterclass or maybe a one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I'm gonna have that in place soon. If she also gets her life insurance license between you know, November and next year, she could also be piggybacking off of all the clients that I have in terms of infinite banking. And she could be leveraging me, she could be leveraging Steve Parisi, our whole infinite banking team and she could be making commissions off of that as well. That's gonna accelerate this. So even while we're doing velocity banking, we could be 10Xing our income. This is something that I did personally is as I was paying off my debt, you know, that's the, that was the main goal, but I was also trying to figure out ways to just bring in extra money that only cost me time. That was it. If it cost me money, I tried to avoid it because I was trying to put all my money towards paying off debt. Um, but if it was like really irresistible, maybe it was a educational course or something like that, that was, you know, like a definite, it was aligned with my purpose, it's going to make me more money, then that's what I was going to focus on. Okay, so let's see. March, got April, May, and let's see what June looks like. So minus income, plus expenses, now I'm at like 2K, and I wrote anywhere from about a 13 to 14K chunk, about a 13 to 14K chunk to wipe out that second 401k loan. Brings up my uh, income again, another 300 plus dollars. So lowballing her again, 4,800, I'm just gonna add 300, 5,100 let's say is now her new income. So 5,100 is the new income, expenses, I'm overestimating, calling it 3,000. We're in June. Balance on my line of credit is gonna be probably, because at the end of June, remember how she, she gets a paycheck. So whether it be at the end of June or beginning of July, as I did say earlier, I said July. So either June, July, make that chunk. Line of credit might go right back up to here again, like 13,000 which I'm cool with because my income goes up, which increases my overall cash flow. And that'll allow me to pay off this next 13, 14,000 a lot faster than the first time that I chunked 13,000 because I got 86 to work with and I've got that 320. The only thing I have left is these student loans right here. And we're going to talk about that in just a second in terms of is it worth paying off all my debt? That's going to be a big question when we're doing velocity banking for people like 
my client here on the board that has a desire to build a business, to 10x their income, to create a different type of lifestyle. If that's not you, if you're not like, you know, entrepreneur, you don't want to do sales, you don't want none of that, then yes, we just stick to paying off all your debt. That will make you happy. Do not compare yourself to anyone in this world other than your yesterday self. Compare yourself to you yesterday and see how you operate. If it makes you completely happy with extreme amount of joy to just wipe out all your debt, then don't listen to anyone else in the world that's saying, no, you need to get a whole bunch of debt and you need to build a business and do this and do this and do this and the other thing. If it doesn't align with your purpose and who you are as an individual, ignore it. Focus on you. What makes you, what brings you the most amount of joy and happiness when it comes to your finances? What's your relationship with your money? Tackle that first and then as we start growing, you might have, you might change a little. You might think, okay, hey, maybe I should acquire some debt to my advantage that's going to make me money. And then you'll start listening. But what you don't want to do is listen to too many people at the same time, right? Let's say you're listening to me, and then you start listening to Dave Ramsey, you start listening to Susie Orman, you start listening to Grant Cardone, Tony Robb. You're listening to just everyone and anyone. If they're not aligning with your purpose, all right? So this whole class, I'm going to be doing a lot of, like, mindset tonight along with, you know, knowing your goals and then your relationship with your money because this stuff is really critical. I've been getting a lot of, you know, comments and questions. Denzel, people ask me, Denzel, why don't you do this? And Denzel, why don't you do that? But hey, it doesn't align with who, who I am as an individual. And I would rather simply be debt free, free and clear of everyone before I start acquiring new debt. That's just how I operate. So for her, beings that we're now in July 2020 and we have a desire to 10x, so we need to make sure that we're keeping that in line. I recommended, I don't know if she remembers this, but I, um, maybe I didn't say it, but I do recommend for her to like leave the student loans alone. Just pay the minimum payment and redirect all money towards something else, which could be IBC, infinite banking, right? establishing her own policy, especially if you're going to be selling an actual product or service, it's best to be a product of the product is what they say, you know, in the sales world, you know, you want to walk the walk instead of just talk, right? You want to really preach and do what it, do exactly what you preach. Okay. So if that's what she wants, I'm recommending somewhere around after I bring this balance down. So let's just say my overall balance starting out goes up to like 14K on the line of credit at, at most, which is most likely not gonna happen, but let's just say it did. 14K balance come July, all right? And mind you, we can always increase that. Every six months, I tell my clients, increase that line of credit, especially if you made a chunk, paid it all back within six months, that looks awesome to them, they'll give you more. So there's that to be aware of. So uh, let's see, 14,000, my, oh, 14,000 minus the new income, 5,100 plus expenses. And I go from 14 all the way down to 11,900, okay? That's why I'm cool with kind of going a little bit above my 66% because once you start cash flowing two and three and four and five thousand, sometimes we can go ahead and violate that 66% rule. Sometimes. Sometimes it does make sense to just go ahead and do that. Get it over with, right? And you're able to create a lot of momentum. So let's see, a thousand, September. Let's say she's doing sales, bringing people to Velocity Banking Master Classes. She's doing her own coaching. Hey, I want to say by October or November, so one whole year working with me, I project that the line of credit either hits zero or she does another move with the money right as it hits zero, whether that's using it to start a policy here, 
Now remember, we're ignoring this, I'm, so I'm not even going to be paying attention to this right now because the objective is for her. I already know it. She wants to 10x, so we want to focus on that. Mm -hmm.